In this video, we'll review the bisection method of root finding. I'd like to emphasize that this video mainly serves as a review. You will need to develop your own bisection code for the workshops, but we won't delve into any code here. This video serves as a refresher of the major concepts of bisection. One of the most famous root finding algorithms is the bisection method. This is the first main root finding method you'll learn in this class. This is a good algorithm to learn because it's straightforward and easy to implement in MATLAB. The basic operating principle lies on the notion that a root lies at the boundary of a sign change within the function. In other words, if a function changes signs between two points, the root must lie in between those two points. This operating principle is actually shared among some other root finding methods, but the way in which each method arrives at the root differs. Because you must supply an initial interval or bracket, bisection is also referred to as a bracketing method. Another root-finding algorithm you'll learn, called Newton-Raphson, is called an open method because it doesn't require an initial bracket. Bisection assumes f of x is real and continuous in the initial interval. This assumption holds for pretty much every ME2004 problem. Before we progress, I want to hammer in the point that whenever we talk about a function in root-finding, we are implicitly talking about the function in f of x equals zero form. What this means is that the function we are trying to find the root of has zero on one side of the equal sign. For instance, if we wanted to solve x cubed equals 27, what we are really doing is finding the root of the function x cubed minus 27. In this case, f of x equals x cubed minus 27, not x cubed. See the 06a video for more details. The bisection method is known as an incremental search method because you must specify an increment, or an interval, over which to search for the root. The interval must contain two points which have different signs when evaluated by the function. This backwards looking E symbol means such that, so this entire statement reads, the bracket XL and XU must be chosen such that the sign of F of XL differs from the sign of F of XU. This is a crucial step that many people overlook when writing their bisection codes in MATLAB. Next, you assume the root is located somewhere within the interval. The interval is then halved, or bisected, and the algorithm looks for the subinterval which contains a sign change. Within this subinterval, you reassign XL and XU accordingly and iterate until you converge on the root. Let's take a look at bisection visually. Let's say that we want to find the root of this unknown function here. From the plot, we can see that the root occurs just after 50, but let's assume we don't have the full benefit of the plot. For our initial guess, let's choose a conservative bracket, xl equals 0 and xu equals 100. We see that f of xl is positive and f of xu is negative, so we have correctly chosen an initial bracket since there is a sign change. An initial bracket of, say, xl equals 0 and xu equals 10 would be incorrect since f of 0 and f of 10 are both positive. This means that the interval either contains no roots or an even number of roots, but the algorithm isn't advanced enough to tell the difference. We then half the initial bracket and assume that the root lies at the midpoint of the boundaries. So we get two subintervals, one from 0 to 50 and one from 50 to 100. We keep the subinterval which contains a sign change and discard the other. In this case, the interval 50 to 100 contains a sign change, so our new bounds become xl equals 50 and xu equals 100. For the second iteration, we split the interval 50 to 100 in half and assume that the root lies at the midpoint. We end up with two subintervals, 50 to 75 and 75 to 100. The interval 50 to 75 contains a sign change, so we'll work with this interval in the third iteration. Once again, we bisect the interval evaluate the signs, and select a new subinterval for the fourth iteration. This process is repeated until we hone in on the root. Every iteration, we split the last interval in half and proceed with the interval which contains a sign change. How do we know when to stop the algorithm? We use what's called a stopping criterion. A stopping criterion is essentially a tolerance. After every iteration, we evaluate the absolute value of f of xr. If it's less than or equal to our stopping criterion, we can stop the search. You might see in some problems that the stopping criterion is somewhere around 0.0001. This means that the function evaluated at the estimated root must be less than or equal to 0.0001, which is pretty darn close enough to zero for our purposes. 
One of the greatest benefits of bisection is that it will always converge to the root given a valid initial interval. This is because of the incremental nature of the algorithm. However, this can mean the algorithm is slow if you provide an incredibly wide initial interval. Another pro of bisection is its logicality. No matter what the function is, you know how the algorithm will perform. But this can be a double-edged sword when it comes to larger complicated functions. While you may know how the algorithm will operate, you will also know that it will be computationally expensive. I want to leave you with something to think about. In the initial interval, the signs of f of xl and f of xu must differ, otherwise the algorithm fails. But why does the algorithm fail? There are at least two answers, both of which are related to the number of roots in the bracket. And that's it for this video. I really hope this helped, and I'll see you soon.